little, it's not the size that I need, um, so it needs to be a little bit larger. What I like to do is I like to grab a garbage can and do my carving and have it fall into there. But the way that this works is you slide it in, has this sharp edge here, and you rotate and twist. And what you wanna do is do it gently. Don't force it or you'll get ridges on the inside. And what's really cool is I'll know when I get to here that I'm about what I want. We're using a tapered mandrel. So that's like when you're making your band ring. So I've got to then stop, turn it around and work from the other side. Okay. I don't have one of these in my studio. What I have is a big rat tail file. And I like using that because not always does your ring have to be perfectly round. But you can see I'm getting to seven, but really seven needs to kind of be in the middle of this. So I know I need to work a little bit farther. And this really is a nice way to just round up a ring. I do want to warn you with this, if you throw it in with your files and stuff, you will start chipping this blade and then you're going to be really unhappy with your results. So a lot of people work a lot more precise than I do. I kind of like to use my um, intuitive qualities. It's great having a brain that works really well, but I think the gut is also a really wonderful way to work. So I'm going to pull this in. I'm going to see if it fits on my finger. It does. It's way bigger than what I need. So at this point, I'm going to trim off the top and I'm going to start trimming off the corners. I do want to show you that you can take, I love these old little dividers and I can determine that I want my ring width to be about 3 16 at least to start. And I can take this and I can drag it around and get a pattern to work off of. And I'm gonna be a little shy on the sides, that's okay. But usually these are used for drawing lines if you want to put lines down to know where you're working. So what this has done for me is it showed me where I need to cut this off. So I'm gonna move around, which is what I love about doing metal work is that I'm not just sitting in one place. And I'm gonna put it in the vise. And I'm gonna use this hacksaw, but I could use the spiral blades. And I'm gonna try to work from the top, leaving a little bit of extra material there. And you notice I put the garbage can underneath, hopefully to save my custodial work. So I'm really appreciative of them doing such a good job on campus, not only trying to keep the place clean, but also safe. So I've got some extra wax to carve with. Got this ring that's here. And at this point, I'm going to still use the hacksaw and I'm going to start like a lot of lapidary people do. I'm going to start faceting off the material I want to get rid of. with the spiral is probably a little bit safer and more accurate but now I've got that much cut off and now I know I definitely don't want my ring band this wide here so I'm gonna kind of measure so what I've got here is like seven eighths I really want mine to be just about three eighths and I probably could measure this a little bit better. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the hacksaw and I'm going to start here. Yeah, we'll go down. Okay. And I'm going to go at an angle. And now I've got that angle cut. I'm going to come back and try to do the same angle. Feel free to use your jeweler's saw with the spiral blades if that's feeling a little too close to your fingers. And then one of the things that I like to show you is the taper that comes into it. And so really you could actually use this material as another ring on a smaller scale. Okay, so make sure the uh, wax dust doesn't end up being here. Clean it up afterwards so that somebody doesn't slip. And I'm at the point now um, to do some work. And what I want to show you, if I'm looking for angular um, shapes, I can see that when I cut this, this side isn't the same angle. So I'm going to tilt this up like this, and I'm going to use it on this rasp. And I'm going to correct my mistake. So now that I'm looking at it, that's starting to come along a little bit better. Pushing down with my thumb so it's cutting more than the top. So I change the angle of my wax. So, starting to get better. It's just up to here, so I got to keep going. Um, any wood. Um, files, rasps work really well for wax work. Starting to get a little bit better perspective. One of the things I know for me is it's really nice to be able to look at something where it's a clean surface to see if I've got the angles right. Just a little bit more. And then I'm going to turn it over and just true up that other side. I think if you first start working with these carving waxes, you're going to wonder why they're so hard. Well, that's so that you can get really clean, slick, smooth surfaces without any fingerprints or any fingernails into your surface. So you can see I've got a little bit more to take down. Could take some measurements to see how far I'm off. Here is just three eighths, and over here, just just a little bit more than three eighths. But I'm not too far off with that. And then when I look on the top, where am I here? I'm pretty close there. These are parallel. Now what I want to do is um, start thinking about the top, and I'm going to do something that looks like two directions and one's going to collide into the other. Um, and I'm going to have it open in the top. Originally I was thinking about I could put a stone in it or I could put something in it that represents connecting. Um, but I like, kind of like the idea of stitching it back together. So that's probably the way I'm going to go on that. Um, the mistake people make when they carve rings is that they go, I don't really know what I'm going to do up here. So I'm just going to make my shank. And then they get the shank so thin that when they start carving the top, they break the shank. So you want to reduce your um, piece down um, all at the same time. So I'm going to set this here and I'm going to think about what I want to have this look like. I got to look at my drawing a little bit, um, kind of like the one that was off the most. So maybe something coming, this coming up this way and spreading like that and then the other one coming from this direction 
and colliding into that. You can kind of see how I'm getting started on that. Um, this is where the um, disclosure wax might help to rub it in there and then you'd see your pattern a little bit better. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just get started and I'm going to use some of these files. Um, we have the needle files that are smaller. Um, I have a tendency to work a little bit bigger and so these files that we have here I really, really like. But I can see I've got to remove this material here. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to start working this away and I can take it down and keep working it till it gets to my line. This going in here, I might want to be using a triangular file, starting here with the triangular file and working this way. So I can remember being in school and one of the things we had to do is take a piece of square wire that was quarter inch and we had to carve into it with our files. That was the only thing we could do with it. Um, I don't make my students do that now, but man, I got good at filing and seeing about how to work the subtractive process. But you can see I'm beginning to get that edge. And so if you're working with files, just know it might take a little bit longer, but it's probably going to be a lot more precise than the flex shaft. Um, unlike working with stone and wood, if I take away too much, I can always go back in and add wax. I try not to do that, but we do have a way to save ourselves if we take it too far off. Then I should probably be sitting at a bench pin. It would be better for what I'm doing here. Um, but you can see where I'm going and what I need to take off. And I'm going to just keep working this down, getting the top about what I want, and then I'm going to look on the sides. And this is where I become a lot more intuitive about what I'm, what I'm doing with the piece. Um, but you can see that beginning to happen. I can also go back in with this big file once I get that part done and I can begin carving the shank but I don't want to take too much of that off right at this point but you can see this should not take you all day you should be able to carve a very simple ring in a couple of hours um, it's really about being willing to commit to the shape that you want and then going for it and then knowing that we can probably fix it. If you break your shank, we can melt it back together. If you break your shank right before you're gonna invest it, we can actually just super glue it back together and invest it. So don't think that if you break it, something's wrong. Um, I'm gonna keep working on this, um, but I'm just gonna keep carving it down. I would like to meet where the flex shaft is and show